No, it's not Rudolph. <laughs> so it's that time of year again, in case you didn't guess, where I try to offer some ways to deal with holiday stress. And I've had a few things come up in the last few days that have given me the ideas. So, of course, as I adjust my chair, I have to tell you a story. So a couple days ago, it was my daughter's birthday, and I live just a little under an hour away from her now. I was trying to finish a homemade birthday gift, and so I was later in the day than I had planned to head out. I get in my car, and there's no electricity. I can't start the car. I'm surprised I even got in the doors with my key fob. I have an old hybrid, and there's no key. So with no electrical system, I guess the universe was watching out for me as they always do. And I'm immediately tense. When I get tense, it's in my neck and down in my shoulders. And my neighbor saw me sitting in the car, kind of pulling at things, slamming things around, pushing that button over and over, hoping that it was just some kind of little catch that I could release. And I told him what was going on. He had a buddy over who knew someone that drives a tow truck and knows cars and texts started going back and forth. As I'm waiting to get a response about whether an old hybrid can even be jump started, because they're different, you know. I am looking at my phone and I pull up a reading that is about muscle memory. And my muscles were definitely remembering something. She was saying that we form these memories and react with our muscles to past occurrences as if that's what's happening in a current occurrence, which actually is probably not the same. We just jump back to what happened before. Now that will become relevant in just a second, but let me just say, yes, you can jump an old hybrid. I got my car started. My neighbor stood out and guarded it while I ran in and got the rest of my stuff and went potty because I didn't dare turn it off. I wanted to make it to my destination so at least I would be near civilization <laughs> instead of out in the boonies where I live. As I'm driving, I am having a hard time really because I'm so tense and my shoulders and neck and there's only so much bobbing around you can do and still pay attention to the road. And I thought about that video about muscle memory. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try something. I'm going to see what it's like to be in the moment, just right now. And I started talking myself through. I am safe at this moment. I am on my way to my destination successfully at this moment. There is nothing in the past I need to be thinking about. I don't need to be worrying about what could happen in the future. I am just fine in this moment. But the reason my muscles were reacting the way they were with such tension is because the last thing that happened with my car, I went to get my oil changed. The staff took out the air filter and found a bunch of nuts. So apparently in the country where I had lived before, the squirrels had been making their home under my hood. They dumped the nuts into my engine. And I got not even a quarter of a mile away when my car started freaking out. It was jerking and making terrible sounds. And I luckily 
could get to a shoulder area big enough to pull over, pulled out the manual to look at the warning code and knew I wasn't going anywhere. Tow truck. Dealership. Over $1,000, which isn't easy to come up with for me. So this is where my muscles had taken me. Oh my God, oh my God, it's going to be over $1,000 again. Where are you going to come up with that? But see, that's not what happened. All it took was a kind neighbor and his buddy being willing to help me calm down and to give me a jump start. And I was fine. So I thought that was very nice of Spirit to direct me to that video as I was waiting. And I'll just share that with you. The next time something unexpected, uh, that didn't want to come out. I think I'm tired of the unexpected. I don't even want to speak it. <laughs> the next time something unexpected happens and you find yourself instantly tensed up, Maybe just take a moment to think, am I reacting to what's going on right now in this moment or am I remembering something that didn't go well before? That helped me slowly get the tension out of my shoulders and neck and the rest of my drive to my daughter was just fine. All it took was being mindful. Now I'm no expert on mindfulness. I probably am like a really poor student on that one, but it worked. And so if you get into a holiday situation where you're all tense, it could be that you're not reacting to what's going on this Christmas, but to something that happened another Christmas. And I don't mean to be leaving out Hanukkah and the other holidays. I'm just a Christmas person. So that's why Christmas. Now the other thing would take some pre-planning. So good thing you're watching this now. You may or may not have heard of a mala. Oops, a mole's backwards. This is a mala. It has 108 beads and a marker. Now how could this help during a stressful holiday dinner or whatever. I'll show you. That would be the first thing you would do. Get away from whatever is causing you stress and take some deep breaths. Sigh a little. What you do is you start at the marker. You aren't supposed to use your index finger and I'm not remembering why that is. So you use your third finger and your thumb. You're going to come up with something positive to say. So a positive affirmation or something that will calm you. Sorry, I have this itch from the tinsel. <laughs> That'll teach me. Yes, being corny doesn't always pay. So it could be like I am just fine. I can return to my family with peace. I am just fine. I can return to my family with peace. I am just fine. Now, you do that through 108 beads. By the time you're done with that 108 beads, with these positive statements you've made, and I would suggest you not go any farther than two, you could just say, I'll be fine when I get out of here. I'll be fine when I get out of here. I'll be fine when I get out of here. <laughs> Just something to calm you. I have done this before and it has saved me from full-blown panic attacks. It just gives you some time to be with yourself, be with something positive, and it's a good practice. So, you can buy them, or you can make your own, but I'll just give you some examples. See, backwards again. This I got on Etsy most recently. I think they're called mermaid beads or angel or quartz, possibly. It's actually 
advertised as a wrap around bracelet. It could be a necklace also, but also in the description is Mala. It has the proper amount of beads. This one's on elastic so that it can be wrapped around the wrist. This one I got a few years ago at Crystal Wizard on the beach. And this is more expensive than the other one because this has been made in the... I was going to say professional way, but in the more sturdy way, I'll say. So I don't know that you'll be able to see. But with this one, there are knots between the beads so that they're more stable and there's nothing stretchy that might eventually break. But the same thing, you'd start at the big bead here that the tassel is attached to and just go through bead by bead. Now, as I do this, I kind of like the bigger beads of the other one. But if you're making your own, you can decide. Now, this is one I made a few years ago, and you'll see it's much smaller. You don't have to do all 108 beads. So this is half of that. I would just count through it twice. You can also do a quarter of that and like wear it around your wrist so it's always with you and then just go through four times. And this is jade, I think, probably faux jade. But um, you also, if you're going to make your own, can pick out your stones according to their spiritual or healing properties, which is a nice thing. And I didn't put this one on stretchy stuff. I think I did try knotting when I first started and I was hopeless at it, so I gave up on the idea, but that does make it more sturdy. So that's my other suggestion. You could make a mulla ahead of time for a family event to be more discreet. Maybe a bracelet with a quarter of 108 beads would make more sense because someone would just say, oh, what a pretty bracelet. But get away from the chaos, breathe, think of something that will soothe you or calm you. And even if you just went through one time, it's maybe not as much time as you would need to get totally calm, but it would get you away from your family until someone came looking for you and just let all that shit go that's been going on and return a little calmer. You know, holidays are stressful any year. We have all the spending we have to do. This year, a lot of people have children that still expect the same kind of presents, but they don't have jobs to pay for all those presents. We have people that are very stressed out and frankly pissed off that they don't get to have their huge family gatherings because of the restrictions. I mean, this COVID stuff is ridiculous. I have seen people wish harm on others because they don't wear their masks. You know, this has been a very divisive thing. And this holiday is going to not seem like a holiday to a lot of people. Just because it's not what they're used to. Well, you know, COVID is all about having to adjust. And we can do it. We can adjust voluntarily or we can fight it the whole way but we're still in the same boat so why not make it a little easier on ourselves now the other thing is a lot of people end up spending their holidays by themselves myself included you know we have such hype about holidays that for a lot of people, the fact that they don't have anyone they love or even like spending it with them makes them quite depressed. If that's you, I get it, you know, and we have this temptation to say, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just another day. Well, you know, it is just another day on the calendar, but it's how it's been built up over the years. It's okay if you're feeling a little upset about it. But I would have a suggestion. Plan ahead. Get something ahead of time that you can look forward to doing at the end of the day. 
So maybe get some yummy smelling bubble bath and some candles and take a bottle of champagne into the bathroom and just luxuriate and get drunk, but you know, not so drunk you go under the water in the tub. Do what makes you feel happy. Don't feel guilty. Don't tell yourself, oh, I'm just escaping and I shouldn't be doing this. You know, take care of yourself. Do something special for yourself. And knowing this ahead of time, you can think about what might make you happy. Now, for those who have recently lost someone they loved, holidays are very hard, that first holiday especially, when you don't have that person with you anymore. So I'm going to suggest something that may seem a little bizarre, but what else would you expect from me? Put a place setting at the table for your loved one that isn't there. Do you think that's going to make you sadder? Nothing's going to make you sadder than you are, but it is how you look at it. It's not a reminder of what you've lost. It's a reminder of the happy times you had. You can look over at that place setting and remember when Uncle Bob, you know, wet his pants from laughing so hard. Or, you know, that kind of thing. Do it as an honoring and you will feel better. Now, if that's you and you're alone, that may sound awful because you don't have any distractions, but actually, it's a wonderful opportunity because you can put that place setting out and start talking to your loved one. Tell them how much you enjoyed them when they were here on earth. Tell them how much you love them, how much you miss them. Cry if you need to. You know, you have the opportunity to say anything you feel that you left unsaid without anyone being around and saying, oh, that's corny. Use it as a healing opportunity. And if you think that you need a medium or someone that can convey your messages to your loved one because you don't consider that you're psychic or whatever, no, you don't. doesn't matter if you think you're psychic or not. Whatever you say, whatever you think, will still go to your loved one in spirit. So make it a special time. Say the things you'd be saying if they were still there. Say the things you regret and ask for forgiveness and know that it's given because remember, they're coming from unconditional love. They're not holding anything against you. And it would be actually maybe a very healing time for you. And you know, spirit's all about healing. So those are just some suggestions to deal with stress. You know, if you know about clearing your energy, when you're done with your family gathering, it's always a great idea to clear that energy out. Just release what doesn't serve you. No matter how you're spending your holiday, I wish you a wonderful day. And just forgive me for a minute here because I'm going to say something personal. Just ignore me. Twin, I am just so happy to know that what you've been waiting so long for is almost here. What a wonderful pre-holiday present that's going to be. And I wish you a wonderful holiday also. Okay, I am done. I don't have any other brilliant or not brilliant ideas and I'm not putting that tinsel back on because it made my nose itch and it was itchy on my neck. Happy holidays guys. Take care.